Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie and I am a Warhammer fanatic and I have finally gotten my hands on Dominion. So I will be showing you my process for painting my very first mini from the box, one of the Annihilators. As always, please let me know what you guys think and thank you for watching. All right, so I primed him gray. I'm gonna pop that shield off just so he's easier to paint, and then I'm gonna be putting down some base coats. So I'm using this dark blue and black. Go in with the black first, or whatever color you're gonna use for the areas underneath the armor, and just go ahead and put those in. We're gonna be doing inside out methods. So basically you wanna do everything that's on the inside and the deepest parts first, and then work your way out. So I'm just base coating, and then I am also taking that same black and putting it into the deepest cracks on the shield. Then I am just taking that dark blue and placing it all over the big sections of the armor. So the trim is going to be gold, but I wanted a blue color for the big portions of it. And I'm just getting this base coat down to prepare for the next step in which I'll be using oil paints on these areas. So this is the paint that I'm going to use. This is an oil paint. If you haven't already, go check out my oil painting video in which I try oil paints for the very first time. I am absolutely addicted to them now, and they're so, so easy as you'll see in this video. So I'm taking that purple and I am just putting it into all of the deepest parts and all of the shadowy areas. And although you can't really see it all that well over the blue, when we start blending in the lighter oil paints, it's very important to have that purple there to give us a base for the blending. So even if you can't really see it, it's still an important step. I put this purple into all of those deep parts. With that done, I am taking blue and white and mixing them in a one-to-one -one ratio in with that purple to get this kind of periwinkle color. And I'm going to be blocking in all of the highlight parts. So I'm not blending yet. I'm just placing these on all of the high parts and I'll be blending them in later. So I'm just going through. Guys, this is so quick. <laughs> like this whole process of doing these big chunks of armor took me maybe 10 minutes. Now is my absolute favorite part, which is blending. So I'm taking a separate brush, not the one I used to put the highlights on. It's a whole new brush. I'm taking it and I am just blurring those lines. The more you use oil paints, the more comfortable you'll get with understanding, you know, when to drag one color into the other and when to bring more color back out. And it all just comes kind of naturally. I don't really know how to explain it. But if you're wondering, is it really as easy as it looks? The answer is yes, it is so easy. So I am just getting these blends in. And then what I do after this is I take pure white oil paint and I just place that onto the highlight parts once again, just to brighten them up a little bit. You don't want to go too crazy with white because it's easy to make your color really um, desaturated. But yeah, just a little bit goes a long way.
All right, so I have Bugman's Glow, Cadian Flesh Tone, and Light Flesh, and I am placing the deepest of those colors into all of the areas that I want to be in shadow, and then I'm taking the mid-tone and placing them over all of the areas that are not the deepest, and using that shade to cover up this huge mess that I made on the side of his head when I was trying to paint the armor and then I am taking the lightest color and I am placing that all over the areas such as the top of the brow, the nose, the chin, all of the areas that protrude the most. With turquoise and pale gray blue, it is time to start the eyes. So first of all, I'm taking turquoise. I watered it down a bit so that it sinks down into the eye sockets easier. And I am just placing that into the socket and kind of letting it flow around where I would normally want to place an eye. Just so that it will contribute to our glow effect when we get there. And then I will be taking pale gray blue and I will be placing a dot of that into the very center of each of the areas that I just painted with the turquoise. Then I mixed the turquoise with the white in a one to one ratio and added a bunch of water to make a glaze that I will be putting all around both of the eyes. While I had the turquoise out, I decided I may as well paint all of the portions of him that will be turquoise. So I am just painting the letters on this little thing that he has hanging off of him. And then I go in on his, on the cracks in his hammer with this color as well. I then went in with white and placed the white towards the center of each of the cracks that like kind of sprawl out. And I'm just doing this to give it a little variation, a little bit more interest. And then I am taking black and I am painting all over the rest of the hammer. I'm not too worried about letting some of the color spill out over the cracks because we want it to look like it's glowing. So then I just took celestial gray and I am giving it a good dry brush before making a white blue glaze and kind of going back over those cracks to redefine them and also give us that glow effect. These are the colors that I use for the chain mail. Um, actually, is it scale mail? Can someone comment? Is it chain mail or scale mail? <laughs> um, okay, so I'm taking the lightest of those colors and I am defining each of the little sections. And then basically all that I'm doing is heightening the contrast. So I'm taking the dark blue mixed with some black and putting that into the cracks. And then I am taking just black and putting that into the cracks and just continuing to layer that so it gets darker and darker while taking more and more white and adding it to the highlight color and just bringing out each of those in this way. I probably did a really bad job explaining that. I'm so sorry. But yeah, this was my first time doing this, so it was kind of all over the place. I then decided to take pure white and do a little bit of edge highlighting on each of the scales. All right, here are all of the colors that I will be using to do the gold. And I'm starting with Mourn Fang Brown, which is the second to darkest color. I'm taking that and I will be base coating all of the areas that will be gold. So this includes all of the trim on the armor, the trim on the hammer, and some other parts that I'm forgetting right now. But pretty straightforward, I am just base coating at this step 
and then shortly after this you will see me start to apply highlights so I'm taking the desert color and I am going to be watering it down just a little bit and placing that onto all of the high parts now for metal it's still confusing for me honestly because this is only my third or maybe fourth miniature doing non-metallic metal on but I used the reference photo on Games Workshop's website. I just pulled the picture of this guy up so I knew where to put the high highlights. And I'm getting a little bit better at, you know, determining where to put them, but I'm still pretty new, so I needed the reference photo. Um, after I put all of the highlights on and kind of sketched them out, I took the darkest color, which is that brown-black color, and I watered that down and I'm placing that into all of the deep parts and then from here all it is is darkening the dark parts and then making the light parts even lighter over less surface area and being mindful of where you're putting the highlights like I said I referred to the picture about a hundred times I kept looking back and forth to make sure that I was on the right track and I'm slowly getting more comfortable with this but it's going to be a while before I really feel confident about it you know Finally, I worked my way up to the lightest color and I added white to it just to bring it up a notch. And again, I am just going over an even smaller surface area and trying to pick out all of the high points. I'm trying my very best to keep the points pointy and not dull because it's supposed to look realistic. Uh, this part was frustrating because I don't have the best brush control in the whole world. so. Yeah, this was challenging, but I just did my best and then finally worked my way up towards pure white and just put this minimally. I didn't put this on much surface area, but just minimally placed that on some parts that I felt needed that extra little pop. All of the hard parts were then finished and it was just detailing at this point. So the first thing I'm doing is taking black and just going over these little things that he has on his chest. I'm taking khaki and painting the thing along his back. And then I also take that color and paint the handle of his hammer. With Gal Vorbach Red and Mephiston Red, I'm going to go ahead and paint all of the little various jewels that he has. So he has some on his hammer, he has one hanging off of his waistband in the back, and he has one on his chest. And so I'm just base coating them with the darker color and then highlighting with the lighter color. And then I take white after this and just go around a few areas. So this includes the details on the hammer the pendant that he has hanging off of him and his little thing on his chest. I'm taking blue tone and dousing the handle of the hammer in it because I wanted it to look more like it had electric magical energy so I went ahead and did that and this is the part where I remember that he also had a shield that I had completely forgotten about so I went ahead and painted the trim of it the exact same way I did the non-metallic metal gold on the rest of it so base coated with Mornifying Brown, picked out all of the highlights, and then kind of just bridged the gap between those, taking the highlights up further. And I definitely referenced the picture on the website for this as well because it was kind of confusing. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And you can see me adding the pure white onto the top portions to just bring that contrast up a little bit more and give the illusion of that shine.
Finally, I am taking the pure white that I was using for that and I am going to be applying it to the only unpainted portion left, which is the center part of the shield, the kind of uh, sunshine looking thing. I don't know. I love the shield so much and I can't believe I forgot about it when I was painting him. But yeah, that is that. Guys, I based him. If you want to see more on how I did that, you can go watch my How I'm Basing Dominion video. I'll link it down below and add one of those little thingies onto this video so you can see it. And that is all. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.